So this video, I'm going to talk about the relationship between the golden child and the scapegoat. This will be my experience, but I think there may be a little bit, a little bit of a few differences depending on which family you've come from. Because there are some families where there was only one child, so the child was everything. The child was the, the scapegoat, the child was the golden child, the child was everything. But a few families, dysfunctional, narcissistic families, I think usually they have a couple of members within that unit. And in my experience as well, I understand that uh, the golden child has always been very close to the scapegoat, okay? So the scapegoat, like we, like we guys already know, the scapegoat has always been the the isolated child, the abused child, and the golden child has always been the favored child. So the golden child has also been a part of the team which was responsible for maintaining <clears throat> and defending the narcissistic parent, okay? And because of this, the golden child has lost themselves they have lost their authenticity and they have lost direction in life for a very long period of time. Because as much as they have been the favored child, okay, so they have been usually showered with this, you know, the admiration, you know, the presence, you know, the adoration, the gifts, and, you know, the praises and whatever, you know. So sometimes in a narcissistic family dynamic, you may find that the golden child can actually never do anything wrong, okay? So however nasty or however bad they may have behaved or done things, they have usually been given a second chance, okay? Or a third chance, even a fourth one. But the scapegoat usually, they're the people who are not supposed to mess up. So when they mess up, it doesn't matter whatever small, whatever it is they have done and they have messed up, they're usually going to be extremely punished by the narcissistic parent or sometimes by even the other siblings in the family, okay? So the role of being a scapegoat, I think in my own opinion, is a very tough role. It's a very difficult role to be a scapegoat of the family, you know, because you are facing all this abuse, all the gaslightings, you know, the blames and whatever. The, you know, everybody is pointing their barrels towards you. And, you know, so sometimes it's very heavy. It's a very heavy energy to carry. But you see, the golden child, why I do feel sorry for the golden child is because I know the golden child, when they move into adulthood, they may not necessarily believe or they may not necessarily even know that they have already lost their original self a very long time ago, okay? So because the golden child is not given a chance to think for themselves, they're not given a chance to make their own decisions, they're not given a chance to do things the right way, you know, because they have always been fed with a golden spoon, okay? Anything they wanted to do, regardless of whether it was right or the wrong one, they always had to do it because it was agreed upon by the narcissistic family uh, unit, the narcissistic parent, and sometimes the other narcissistic siblings. So the golden child has lost, uh, as long time ago, lost, lost their sense of self, and they have become extremely, extremely trauma-bonded with the narcissist. Is the reason as to why you see sometimes when you have left a narcissistic family dynamic. The very first person to defend the narcissist, in most cases, I don't know what will be your case, but in most cases, the very first person that is going to defend that narcissistic parent is going to be always the golden child, okay? So those are the people that are like the defenders, they are the, they are the bodyguards, you know, they are the security. They are the ones who are always there to stand in and defend that narcissistic parent regardless of the mess that they have done and all the BS that they have put out there. So sometimes, as they grow, they also realize that they are going to be struggling because they are only used to being adored, you know, being gifted, being admired, being praised, that kind of lifestyle. And sometimes when they grow up, that's the only energy that they are used to. It's the only energy that they are accustomed to. So most of the times a golden child in most case scenarios, they would usually end up as well with narcissistic boyfriends, okay? So because they want to keep on getting the same attention, 
uh, gifts and admiration that they've always got from the narcissistic parents. They are narcissistic parents. That is if they are not at home and they have already moved on into marriages and, uh, you know, relationships. <clears throat> but you see, sometimes, why do I believe that that is dangerous? Because there is very little chances that a golden child can never heal. Because a lot of golden children, sometimes they end up, they can end up in their adulthood becoming narcissists, okay? Because they have been used to that similar energy. And most of the times they are going to exhibit a lot of uh, narcissistic traits. Sometimes you, may even, you, may, you even find sometimes golden children who are, they have been empaths initially, at a, at a younger stage in time, they were actual empaths. But then they were broken bit by bit as they kept on growing and evolving. They kept on being broken down. Sometimes that's the reason why you see most of them they act in very narcissistic ways. Even some of them, actually, they end up becoming uh, full-blown narcissists at, at some stage in time, okay? But the only person that doesn't succumb to that abuse, oh, okay, they have had that abuse, of course, so much in their lives during that time, but those are the only individuals that are not affected because a scapegoat is a person who has got the mind of their own, okay? Like I've told you, you're the black sheep of the family, so you've got the mind of your own. It doesn't matter well, of course, sometimes you used to be abused or used to be uh, beaten down or whatever, uh, invalidated in so many ways. But at the end of the day, you still recognize that you've always kept a mind of your own and you've always stayed away from toxicity. OK, so sometimes you've even tried to um, to stand back when there was a lot of chaos going on in the family because you didn't want to participate in that kind of chaos. OK, so. The golden child and the narcissist, they are two different people. Although most of the times in many families, the two of them are very close. They are usually depending on each other because sometimes the golden child may usually be very, very close, share a lot of things with the, uh, with the scapegoat. And sometimes the scapegoat may also want to share a lot of things with the golden child. So most of the times, the two of them, usually they are very close to each other and they share a lot of, a lot of things together. But the real problem usually starts when the scapegoat has felt that the abuse has been enough and the scapegoat has decided to walk away or to walk out of that situation and they have decided to take, a, to take a different path in life. And by the moment the scapegoat makes that decision, they have already looked at everything and they have already seen everything and they believe that at some point it is time for them to save themselves because now they are realizing that they are in really, really big trouble and they really need to get away and start working on themselves because like I've told you, those scapegoats, they always have kept a mind of their own ever since they were kids. It's the reason as to why they have been abused, because they have refused to participate in that kind of BS that has been going on in that unit, okay? So, when those people grow up later on and the scapegoat has left the unit, now the golden child usually becomes very isolated, because now they don't have anybody to come around them, and anybody to be around them, anybody to help them, anybody to, you know, validate them, and other things like that. And the scapegoat will usually be the first person to feel the intensity or the departure of the scapegoat away from the family. So the scapegoat, when they leave that unit out of the family unit and they have gone away, even sometimes it has been ages, you may see sometimes a year on or a year or two later on, you may sometimes start getting a lot of uh, contacts from the golden child, okay? The reason why the golden child is reaching out to you normally is because the golden child is starting to see how intensive this abuse is in the family. Because you see, when he was there, they were not able to, to realize and to see this. But now that you have left, they are able to see the real problem, what it was. And you see, the problem is as well, they are not in position to fix it. Because I've told you, those people, they are strongly, strongly trauma bonded with the narcissist. But remember that the scapegoat you are out and you are trying to break out of these trauma bonds, which the golden child cannot. So sometimes you may get a case where the golden child is reaching out to the scapegoat, okay? It may be sometimes a piece of advice. I have personally helped so many times the golden child to, you know, when it was when it, when it came to the relationships because I knew that they were dealing with the narcissist. And sometimes when things were breaking down, you know, the golden child used to reach out to me and I used to uh, help them and advise them and things like that. Although there was nothing much I could do because I realized that whatever input I could put in there, it wasn't helping because they were always keeping on going back into those same patterns. And sometimes it was draining a lot of my energy. So I had to just cut the whole situation and just move away, okay? So if you're the scapegoat out there, I just want to let you know in this video that usually 
you're going to get sometimes there will be cases where you are going to be approached okay by the golden child they may sometimes try to get you back into the family because they are realizing that you've been away for, for a while and the mess is getting deeper and they don't even know how to fix it okay so the only person who knew how to fix that mess by being the scapegoat of the family has left now the whole fam the whole family is in pieces the whole family is breaking down the whole foundation is breaking down and they don't know how to handle this so sometimes they may send they may they, they go to the child may come to you voluntarily uh but sometimes they may actually be sent to you by the other narcissistic family members to come and talk to you and see if they can actually get you back into the family but if it's not that in the case of where they are trying actually to hover you back into the family the golden child sometimes may reach out to you for advice okay so they want you to help them with a few things they could be sometimes struggling with their mental health sometimes they could be struggling with even health problems sometimes they may be struggling with uh, you know a lot of situations going on in their lives maybe sometimes even finances or whatever it is so there may, there may be so many reasons why they may reach out because a golden child knows that when the scapegoat leaves they intuitively know that this person is going to heal okay and most of the time they're they even sometimes going to be doing better than they used to do before most of the time they will know this so sometimes they are reaching out to you for advice they want to know how do you do it or how did you do it or how can they get along with certain situations that they're not able to deal with on their own so if a person who is having now these contacts and communications coming in from uh, the golden child you have to understand that things are going very bad for them things are not well with them okay so sometimes the reason why you really have to get away so the reason why i'm telling you people to get away i want you to stop participating in that kind of mess because that kind of mess is very dark energy and sometimes it can also mess you up so so but at the end of the day when you've gotten away it doesn't really mean that you hate anyone or you wish them bad or you want the you want the worst for them or the things like that you just got away because you went away and you, you realize that you are, you have got to go away and work on yourself so most of the times you will have moments when you will miss some of them okay it might happen most of the time especially in the early days of your healing journey they usually happen times when you're going to miss them but as the time goes on you're going to realize that actually you're releasing that energy with time okay it takes a lot of time everybody can sometimes a lot of scapegoats they have got different levels to healing everybody can heal differently some people they are stronger than the other ones some people spend years some people can heal within months it depends but whichever way you want to look at it you will understand that those individuals back there especially the golden child they are actually missing you usually that family doesn't miss you because they miss your attention or the things like that or whatever it is they just miss you because when you was in that family you used to stabilize this whole situation so whenever there was all this drama and the chaos that was going on you being there and being a scapegoat whereby they could now divert all their attention and the garbage towards your way and the barrels towards your way they were able to get away with a lot of things okay but now you're gone and most of the time they don't know what to do with themselves and that tension usually is going to be put on the golden child so if, the, if it's a very small family there's a very big chance the narcissistic parent may try to find to pick out the golden child as the next victim who is going to supply that family with energy okay so they may pick up the golden child and try to turn them to be a scapegoat me personally i know that the golden child has also detached from the family i do not know for how long it's going to happen but i know that they have detached because they have sensed that they were the, the energy in that unit was very intensive and they are actually stepped away and gone out there i don't know what they are doing at the moment i may find out sometime later on okay so scapegoats be aware that you are going to be contacted by the golden child of the family okay they will come around there they're going to ask you for something they're going to ask you for advice they'll ask you for money of course initially they've already tried to even ask you to come back in the unit because now they realize without you it's almost impossible for the family to survive okay but you have got to be sure that those individuals are going to reach out to you and if they reached out to you i would like to know what has been your experience and what did they want from you in the comment section below so let us know what you think about this video in the comment section below i still want to hear from the scapegoats out there drop us a comment and let us know what has been your experience have those people reached out and when they did what did they tell you what was the experience let us know everything in the comment section as well book a session or donate or support my channel if you want to everything you need you will find it in the description below and until then i'll catch you guys in my next one there's almost signing out much love and blessings peace